Welcome to the Nutrient Cycles video lesson. In this lesson we'll be learning about different ways in which nutrients are cycled in the, bi in the biosphere. Including this will be a discussion on the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and the phosphorus cycle. Let's start with the water cycle. The water cycle is the constant movement of water between oceans and lakes, the atmosphere, and land. Water falls to the surface as precipitation. Surface runoff leads through streams and rivers to lakes and oceans. Some of that water seeps into the ground and becomes groundwater. Water from the lakes and oceans evaporates into the atmosphere and then condenses into clouds. Groundwater is taken up by plant roots and through a process called transpiration is released into the atmosphere. Then the cycle repeats. Here is a nice diagram showing the water cycle and the process by which water is transferred between oceans and lakes, the atmosphere and land. Here we have the evaporation of water from the lakes and oceans here that condenses into forms clouds. Precipitation falls back onto the surface of the earth. Sometimes this precipitation, as you well know, is in the form of snow and snow melt runoff or rain runoff comes back on, down onto the water. Some of that water infiltrates and becomes groundwater where it's taken up by plants and plants by the process of photosynthesis give off water which is released by the plant in a process called transpiration back into the atmosphere. And this cycle just continues over and over and over again. The water cycle. Next we'll discuss what is called the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is the constant movement of carbon between the oceans and lakes, the atmosphere, and land. Carbon is a major component in all organic compounds. You learned that back in our biochemistry unit. Carbon is found in the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide gas also known as CO2. Carbon is found in the lakes and oceans as dissolved carbon dioxide in the water. And carbon is found on land in organisms, rocks, and soil. Carbon is also found underground as coal, petroleum, and calcium carbonate. This diagram is a great representation of what happens in the carbon cycle. Carbon dioxide is exchanged between the atmosphere and the oceans and lakes. Plants remove the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In the process of photosynthesis, plants use that carbon dioxide to make energy. Animals eat the plants and in the process release carbon dioxide during respiration. By the way, plants also release carbon dioxide when they um, burn their energy to grow. Humans burn fossil fuels releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as well. And when animals and plants die, they eventually become fossil fuels such as coal and oil. Sea creatures build their shells from dissolved carbonates, and that's another way that carbon can get in the, uh, into the biosphere. And again, this cycle takes place over and over and over again. The carbon cycle. Next, we'll discuss the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is the constant movement of nitrogen between the oceans, lakes, the atmosphere, and land. Nitrogen is needed by all organisms to make amino acids and nucleic acids. 
nitrogen is found in the atmosphere in the form of nitrogen gas, also called N2. The atmosphere is the largest reservoir of nitrogen and makes up 78% of our atmosphere. Most students have a misconception that oxygen is the primary gas in our atmosphere because that's the one we need in order to perform respiration in our bodies and grow and develop. However, the reality is that nitrogen gas makes up 78% of our atmosphere, whereas oxygen makes up 21% of our atmosphere. So a large resource of nitrogen in our atmosphere. Nitrogen is also found in lakes and oceans as dissolved nitrogen. Nitrogen is also found in soil compounds such as ammonia, NH3, nitrate ions, NO3-, and nitrite ions, NO2 minus. Some bacteria and some plants perform a process by which to put nitrogen from the atmosphere into our soil. That process is called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is the process by which certain bacteria and some plants called legumes, and examples of legumes include clover, soybeans, which you should be familiar with around here, alfalfa, which is the most popular form of hay around here, and peanuts. These certain bacteria and these legumes convert nitrogen gas from our atmosphere and convert it into ammonia, NH3, in our soil. The opposite of that process is taking the nitrogen from our soil and converting it into nitrogen gas back into our atmosphere. That process is called denitrification. And that is the process by which some soil bacteria get their energy by converting nitrates into nitrogen gas. Here is another nice diagram showing the nitrogen cycle. And here we have lightning, which will form nitrogen compounds when it strikes. It will form nitrogen compounds in the soil. And nitrogen gas in our atmosphere, we have nitrifying algae, denitrifying bacteria, putting nitrogen back in our atmosphere. And we have nitrogen-fixing bacteria and nitrogen-fixing plants that take the bacteria, I'm sorry, that take the nitrogen from our atmosphere and form it into nitrogen compounds. These nitrogen compounds in the plants are then eaten by animals and the cycle continues over and over again, um, keeping the nitrogen cycling in our biosphere. The last nutrient cycle we're gonna take a look at is the phosphorus cycle. In the phosphorus cycle, it is the constant movement of phosphorus between oceans and lakes and land. What you notice here is that unlike other nutrients, phosphorus is not found in significant quantities in the atmosphere. Phosphorus is needed by all organisms to make DNA and RNA. Phosphorus is found on land in phosphate rocks and soil minerals. Phosphorus is found in lakes and oceans as dissolved phosphate or in phosphate sediments. Rocks and sediments release phosphates as they break down. Plants then take in these phosphates and bind it into organic compounds. These organic phosphates then move through the food web to the rest of the ecosystem. The phosphate is then returned to the land or oceans when organisms excrete and or die. Here's a nice diagram showing the phosphorus cycle. 
And what you, again, don't see here is significant phosphorus in the atmosphere. The phosphorus cycle mainly takes place between land and lakes and oceans. This does a nice job showing all the different types of phosph the phosphates and how they cycle between land and um, the oceans.